over the next two weeks, starting next week, uh, uh, we'll be having a two-week stewardship emphasis where we'll be talking about using our time, talents, and, uh, and, and our money as well that God gives us. And, uh, so you'll, you should see some stuff in your uh, mailbox out there and also a survey of, um, just to go through some of your talents or areas that you could help with the church. And, and uh, we were talking the other night that just because you have talents in a certain area is not necessarily the ones you use in church. So um, if, if there's something else that you would like to do or help with, please write that down on there so they can help um, uh, get that the right way so they can see where you'd like to be used and, and where you would like to fit in and help. So uh, the more the merrier. Just like, uh, was that two weeks ago now or last week, the trunk or treat? And all the people that came out to help with that too. So just uh, when people show up to do what they can do, that's we always have more than enough. So. We'll talk about that. Let's see. Uh, what else we got here? A few other things. Um, I saw them now. I can't see them. Anyway, any other announcements then? Since my eyes aren't working. <laughs> yeah. Nothing? Anything? The bazaar down there. Oh, yeah, the bazaar. Is it finish up? Finish? I don't know. Let's see that. Last minute shopping? Is that downstairs? So if you'd like to do that? And uh, that would be good. Hopefully they have a really good weekend. So, weather well, cooperating for once, so that's nice. Uh, this morning is All Saints Day, or at least our celebration of All Saints Day. And, and it's a morning or a day we set aside um, uh, to remember those who have gone before us and to give thanks to God for their faithfulness and their examples of faith. And, and so um, we don't worship them. We don't do anything like that, but we thank God for the fact that he put them in our lives, and, and that, uh, especially those we know who are in the Lord, uh, we know where they are, and that promise is for us as well, so uh, that's our focus this morning. Why don't we open with our first hymn? <laughs>
together in your name to remember and rejoice. We remember once we love, once love also by name. We remember how you embrace them, show them grace, and fill them with faith. We remember with heavy hearts. We remember with thankful hearts. We rejoice in the resurrection, life promised in and through Christ. We rejoice that Jesus has overcome death forever. We, we rejoice that you are God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in baptism, God welcomes us into the family of Christ and embraces us with his love. Welcomed and embraced, we are free to confess our sins, trusting the power of Christ to lead us to newness of life. We confess, good Lord, that we have sinned against you and our neighbors in thought, word, and deed. We have hungered and thirsted for unworthy things. Our hearts are not right within us. Forgive us, O oh God, for the sake of Jesus, our brother. Today we hear these beautiful words from St. John. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God for our baptism into rest. You may be seated.
we continue with the inventory. These are the ones coming out of the Great Tribulation. They have they washed washed their, their robes and made them white with the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed you, O Lord, faithful God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Ascending from the rising of the sun, 
with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the seal, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben. 12,000 from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher. 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali. 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh. 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon. 12,000 from the tribe of Levi. 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar. 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulon. 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph. 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white to the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle lesson is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. As we prepare for Holy Communion, let us confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the end.
in the name of the one true God, in whom all our hope is laid. Amen. You may sit down. You know, brothers and sisters, as the church, we set aside All Saints Day to remember and to thank God for all those who have gone before us in the Lord. And it's a day that should bring comfort to all Christians who have lost loved ones. Comfort comes through the promise that what to the world appears to be a loss is only a transition, or maybe we could call it a graduation for the Christian. And John reminds us that in this world there will be trouble. But those who are children of God have received the promise both that death has been defeated and that it has no power over a believer. So we do have hope that no other have. And we, we have it in the one who did what it took to make us his children. Our hope as God's children is in Christ Jesus. You see, brothers and sisters, John tells us the truth this morning. As believers, our hope will always be under attack by worldly, sinful, and satanic lives. In fact, when John wrote this short little letter, the church was already suffering attacks from both Jewish and Gentile religions. Many of the apostles had already been martyred by this time for their faith. And still to this day, many, many Christians around the world are being martyred for Christ. In fact, the numbers show that every year more Christians are killed for their faith than the year before. Now we in the United States have only seen nominal threats. It's been pretty easy here to be a Christian. But from all appearances, the church in America is facing greater and greater hostility from all sides every day, including the media, our own government, and our own neighbors, all meant to weaken our faith and our hope in Christ Jesus. And more and more we hear the so-called experts trying to deny and destroy the teachings of the Bible, such as the virgin birth, miraculous healings, exorcisms, Jesus' resurrection, his life after death, and divine creation. And with death and disease and suffering always surrounding us, sometimes it can cause us to lose hope at times, even towards the promises of God that we know are true. And as if that weren't bad enough, no matter how hard we try to cling to the hope of the promises of God, we sometimes find ourselves questioning whether God's promises could really be for us personally. We know our sins. And we wonder, can God really forgive what I've thought, what I've said, and what I've done? You see, our hope is constantly under attack by the devil and his demons. He is the accuser, and he will not let our sin go unchallenged. The devil's goal is to separate us from the promises of God and lead us down the road to despair. You ever wonder why suicide and depression and all of those are at epidemic levels in our nation? It's a spiritual war, brothers and sisters. The question he put to, the, to Eve in the garden still haunts us today. And he whispers it in your ear dozens of times a day. Did God really say? The world and our own sinful self continually tell us lies that we so often fall for. The devil tries to use these lies to make us question God's promises and the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. But the truth is, and John said it so clearly, we are children of God. And the truth, brothers and sisters, is that all believers face spiritual doubt at one time or another. And it's important that you recognize this, that you understand that it will come to everyone. Too often, Christians fail to recognize that these doubts are spiritual attacks from the evil one. And we find ourselves asking, why do I struggle so much while well, all the other Christians seem to be doing so well? Am I really a child of God? Does he really love me? Instead of looking internally for our hope, brothers and sisters, we must look to the truth of who we are in Christ Jesus. When we try to suffer silently in battle on our own, we are always going to fail. We can't do it on our own. Real hope can never be found inside ourselves 
or in the conditions that we observe inside our own life. The only hope that's guaranteed is the hope that sees what's been done completely outside of ourselves, completely for us. And that is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> that's the only place real hope comes from, in Jesus, through the eyes of faith. And John reminds us this morning, with the eyes of faith, see. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. The eyes of faith can also be ears of faith that simply hear and believe what God says. Children of God, and so you are. What love the Father has given to each and every one of you, not deserved, not earned, but lavished upon you without any merit or worthiness within you. It is a pure gift of love, freely given from your Father in heaven. You see, we are children of God. God the Father has called us through his Son, Jesus Christ. We have been added to the family of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through the Word and the waters of holy baptism. It is true, though, isn't it? The world does not know us, as John said. When things go badly, enemies attack us. And we may think that we're, that means that we're not children of God. But John also reminds us that we need to remember how the world treated Jesus, the rejection, the torture, and the death, all gleefully done to destroy him. And if that's how the world treated our Savior, then the children of God should expect nothing better than that. And amid such suffering, John reminds us to look to Jesus' resurrection. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. The love that we have received is a pure gift from our Father in heaven through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Therefore, we are children of God. And in Jesus, we have the hope that beyond this life, we shall be like Jesus one day very soon, and I hope sooner than that. Jesus is going to appear again in glory, coming back from heaven for all the world to see. Now, we don't know everything about that day or, or what life is going to be like when he creates the new heaven and the new earth. But we do know that our bodies will be raised. These own, our own real, fleshly, made from dirt, human bodies, and that our bodies and the bodies of all the saints, our loved ones who have died before us in Christ, will be raised. They will be glorified like his glorious body to live together with him forever. And you see, this is a fact. It is a certainty because God has said it and because our hope is founded on the reality of Jesus' incarnation and divinity and on the fact that he completed everything that was incomplete within us. He became human like us and he took all of our sin. He carried our sin to the cross and to death so that in his resurrection, we would be purified before him. Our purity is not based on ourselves, but in Jesus' death and resurrection, in his righteousness. All our sin is washed away through the blood of Christ. And oh yes, we will continue to sin in this life, yet Jesus continues to cover our sin with his death and resurrection. And yet this, not, this is not only something completed 2,000 years ago, brothers and sisters. You see, when we come to worship, when we come to the divine service, Jesus continues to deliver his gifts to us, gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation, his very body, in his very blood that was sacrificed for us. Such forgiveness empties us of the lies from the devil, the world, and our own sinful doubts. That's why John's little epistle is so wonderful, because in it the Lord will not let us forget who we are. Jesus' forgiveness is perfect apart from anything within us. And this is the hope that we have as children of God, it is a hope that sustains because of Christ's righteousness. Now on this All Saints Day, we as Lutheran Christians understand that 
We don't focus on the spiritual power or the piety of those who have died. And we know that there's nothing laudable in any of us before a righteous and perfect God. But we do rejoice that those we love are with Jesus, awaiting the glorious day when we shall all gather before the throne of God. The promises of Scripture is for all God's children, those who have gone before and for you as well. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So let us go forth today and every day, knowing that our salvation, our forgiveness, and our hope is built on the promise that will never fail us. For we are in Jesus, and he is in us. Death has been defeated in his death and resurrection, and we are incorporated into this promise through the waters of holy baptism. We will live even though we die. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. It's now time for a morning offering. Heavenly Father, comfort us by your abiding presence 
and satisfy all who call on you in need, especially those who we name before you now in our hearts. Grant them patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, release them from their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, be with your church and all her members who belong to you by baptism and faith. At the bidding of the Lamb, our shepherd, give us ears to hear your word and faith to receive him in his blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that we may be brought to everlasting life with the faithful who have gone before us, who now rest from their labors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Father, we give you thanks that you have washed us in the blood of the Lamb, written our names in the book of life, and made us a royal priesthood and heirs of an eternal inheritance. Thank you for all those names that are written on this banner in, in our sanctuary today, Lord. May they be continuing examples to us for faithfulness. Though we are unworthy of your saving grace, we pray you to hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom, with whom, and through whom all honor and glory is yours, Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Deliver and preserve us. 
To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy <coughs> Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. Thank you.